All right, so in this video, we're gonna be going over how to compute uh, plots for the relevant coefficients computed from Boltzstrap 2. Um, and the first step is uh, kind of having your DFT data in the correct directory. And if you followed the last video, you're actually already um, all set to begin with this step. But if you're bringing your own DFT data and you don't wanna watch the um, last step, um, last video, all you have to do is make sure if you're using GPUG, your GPW file is in the correct folder. Um, and then you would just simply run uh, this command here. Same thing with Quantum Espresso, VASP, whatever. Just run a command like this. You sometimes need to play with the end value to converge your results, but for the purposes of the video, this is fine. Um, just run that command. And then what that will give you is an interpolation.bt2 file. So if you already followed last video and you have this file, uh, you're ready to go. If you don't, just run a command like this using your data. Now the first thing we need to do, I'm just going to run this command and then I'll talk because it takes a second to run, is we need to more or less integrate over our interpolated DFT data. So interpolation.bt2 has the data from the Fourier interpolation of the DFT data. Then what we do here is this actually does the Boltzmann transport stuff where um, and the command to do it is integrate and then you pass the target file which again for us is interpolation.bt2 and then what you're looking at here is a, um, a range of temperatures so we're going from 300 to 800 K uh, in steps of 100 and then this should be probably done by now Let's see yeah so this is done I'll just kind of clear the screen so it's not so messy and you see the new files we got out of doing this are interpolation files. This is the file that the Boltstrap plotting tool will use. This is the file that we will use. And I'll give you a script to use in case you want to have more customizable plots. So um, in terms of how to use the Boltstrap 2 plotter, so you can always just run btp2 plot dash dash help. And you have all this info, it tells you what you can plot with this tool, it tells you all the different options. Um, and rather than reading through all of that with you, I'll just kind of show you by example. And then I'll show you the script that we can use to get some slightly more customizable plots. So this is an example of how we use um, this thing to plot, for example, the XX component of the Sigma tensor. We could just as easily have done the, say, XX and YY component of the Sigma tensor. Um, and when we run this, we'll get two plots. So it's pretty much BTP2 plot. Dash U tells us that we want the chemical potential on the x-axis. Dash C tells us that we're about to give a Python list, in quotes, uh, with the components that we want plotted. So here, uh, x-axis and y-y. S tells us how many values to skip. So when we did the interpolation, we went from 300 to 800 K in steps of 100. So we don't want to skip any, but say you did in steps of one, you might want to set that um, subsampler here. Basically, this tells it how many values am I skipping before I plot the next one. You might want to set that to 100 if you've done that. Um, but for us, we skipped in terms of actually computing them because it's just easier that way. Uh, and these are your outputs. So this is sigma uh, as a function of chemical potential for your system. You could just as easily do something like this for the density of states. <clears throat> you just get this. Obviously, there are no components to the density of states, so it's just one plot. Um, and you could just as easily have done this for S, uh, CVEC coefficient. And this, um, say for XX, looks you know pretty similar to what we have in the Boltstrap 2 wiki. We have a different temperature range and our DFT data is slightly different, but you can see it's qualitatively uh, the exact same uh, as this plot. So this is how you get to this sort of stage using the Boltstrap uh, plotting utility. Now we have another plotting utility that I will post on the GitHub. Um, I'll just briefly walk you through the one thing you need to change in the script. So you can either plot the chemical potential on the x-axis by setting this to true, or you can plot uh, the carrier concentration. So I'll just show you. If we run this, just like the Boltstrap plotting tool, then this will give us both of these plots on the same thing. 
and it's very easy for us to kind of change the legend, the colors of the lines, um, the ticks on the X and Y axis. This is all just matplotlib. So if you use that already, this is a very useful way to do things. Um, and if you wanted to plot the chemical um, or the carrier concentration, then you just need to set this to false. And the useful thing about this script is that in the Bootstrap 2 data, uh, the carrier concentration is given in terms of electrons per unit cell. And what this script does is it will convert that to you or for you into um, basically electrons per electrons or holes per centimeter cubed. And that happens in this line here. This will be automatically done for you if you're using GPA and you're running everything in the folder where your uh, DFT data is for Voltstrap 2 from GPA. If you're using Quantum Espresso or something like that, just um, specify your volume in the angstrom cubed as some specific uh, number here. Because obviously um, this is set up to read specifically from a GPA calculation. So, and, and then, I mean, you'll have to comment out uh, these lines potentially. So that's fine. But um, that's kind of useful if you are using GPA uh, to do it this way, because then you don't have to compute that. And this would be plotting against carrier concentration. So uh, that's kind of all we're looking at. And uh, you get a sort of mirror around the zero point, because doping upwards in chemical potential gives you negative carrier concentration. Um, so you should see a sort of mirror around your zero, especially if you're dealing with a semiconductor. And that's pretty much it for this. So there's not too much more, but I'll, I'll just give a couple comments. And in the next video, what I'll show you is something that I think is more useful, which is how to pick a specific um, carrier concentration and then look at the values over a range of uh, over a range of temperatures. This is a lot of times what you'll see people do in papers. So um, this will be for the next video, but just to give you an idea, if you care about this, keep an eye out for the next video. This picks some specific carrier concentration and then plots these things as a function of temperature, which can be more useful. So again, keep an eye out for that. Just uh, I'll plot, I'll post that pretty soon after this. Now, one very last thing though for this video is, and again, I will post this script. All you have to change is chemical potential scan, true or false, based on whether you want carrier concentration or chemical potential on the x-axis. And then sometimes if you're dealing with a 2D system, you may prefer to only include the SXX, -X, SYY components, for example, and change this to divided by two, something like that. Same thing for the conductivity. Um, but that's really up to you, um, and you need to decide that for yourself. Now, one last thing that can be useful is sometimes you care about ZT or the thermoelectric power factor, S squared sigma. And these things are very easy to compute. Basically, you just load in your relevant data. Um, so the thermoelectric power factor, for example, is just S squared sigma. So we could very easily take um, SXX plus SYY plus SZZ squared. <clears throat> and we should probably uh, have divided this by three, but I'm just kind of illustrating the point for you. Multiplied by SXX plus SYY. Can't type right now. Plus SZZ. Uh, again, divided by three, and this would give you thermoelectric power factor, and then all you have to do is replace one of these with uh, thermoelectric power factor, and you can get a similar plot for that. And it's the same thing for ZT if you get um, your lattice contribution to the thermal conductivity. I specifically didn't show that for this because it's not a useful quantity unless you have the lattice contribution, which Bootstrap 2 doesn't give you alone but we could go over computing something like that in a future video. So just again to recap very briefly, interpolate your data, integrate it over your desired temperature range, and then you can either use the Bootstrap 2 plotting tool here, or you can use this script to get um, kind of a more customizable experience where you can change the colors, you can change the labels, you can change the temperature range, 
and what you're plotting on the x-axis kind of very quickly. So I hope you find this helpful. Um, if you need help with anything else, if anything in this video is not clear, and again, if you want to see how to get plots like this, uh, keep an eye out for the next video, which I'll post very shortly. I'm going to record it right after this. I just didn't want to make this one too long. So again, drop a question down below if you need help with anything. Hope you did find this helpful, and uh, have a good day.